Hi, Captain G here. This is the uh, first in a few weeks that I've uh, made a video. My uh, brother's been after me to uh, make another sailing video. So we'll see how today goes. As you can see, there's uh, some waves here on the Little Mississippi Lake and uh, the uh, wind is blowing pretty good from uh, 14 knots gusting to 20. So uh, you can see uh, the Nordica out there bouncing at her mooring and uh, we'll give it a try. Okay, I'm out at the Nordica here now and uh, the winds are blowing pretty good. I wouldn't mind having one of my sailing buddies or my oldest grandson with me to uh, be uh, experienced crew for me here this afternoon, but we'll give it a try. I'm just starting to unbutton the mooring cover and uh, then uh, we'll see what we can do. I can see in the distance out there we've got a small sailboat. I think it's a, a laser out there. So uh, I'm not the only one crazy enough to try this this afternoon. Okay, I've got the uh, cover off, the mooring cover off the Nordica here, and I'm just about to open up the front hatch and uh, store my gear inside. Um, I still have the uh, sail cover to take off here. And uh, first repair of the day, uh, the last time I was out, I noticed that the uh, split in this handle here for the um, Killer extension seems to be uh, have a bit of a crack in it, so I'm going to put another tie wrap on that just to prevent it from getting any worse. That is not a tiller extension that came on this boat. That uh, tiller extension came from a a little sailboat I had on this lake here 40 years ago, called a Wildflower, and um, the Wildflower hull went kaput, but I still have the uh, rudder, the uh, dagger board, and the uh, sails, the mast, the boom, all the fittings, and that tail tiller extension is what I put onto, uh, onto the tiller handle here. Actually, if you look real close at the uh, motor mount on my dinghy there, that under that eight-horse Yamaha four-stroke, that uh, motor mount came off the the little wildflower sailboat. So, uh, recycling parts rather than throwing them out. Does that make me a hoarder? No, I don't think so. Okay, I've got the uh, mainsail all uncovered here and uh, just have to uh, tighten it down at the back and uh, Take off the uh, the bindings here. I've got the uh, jib sheet hooked up there, for, uh, just on ahead of the mast, and it's ready to go, ready to, for me to put the jib on. The uh, winds here are coming right at me, um, and my position in regards to the shore is like this. Just trying to figure out which is the best way out of here this afternoon. I may have to uh, tie the uh, dinghy off on the uh, port side of the Nordica instead of on the starboard side and head slightly towards shore and then back out into the bigger lake to get off the mooring. The uh, winds are quite a bit gusty when they're just blowing steadily. They're, uh, they're probably perfect but when they gust up like they are now, you can see the flags on shore, um, then uh, that makes it a little more exciting, shall we say, when you're by yourself. Wow, this has been quite a ride here this afternoon. This is the uh, first I've had a chance to get some lighter, whoops, could be picking up. It's, it's really gusty here today. The amazing thing is, in 40 years, I've never seen four sails up on this end of the lake. We've had uh, three sailboats and uh, 
a sail board. Uh, so I guess everybody decided to take advantage. This is this part of the North America. This is one of the last days in the forecast to have 80 degree Fahrenheit temperatures plus uh, significant winds. So I guess everybody's uh, taking advantage of it. We may not see those kind of temperatures now till spring. Who knows? But uh, the challenge uh, for me with the gusty winds isn't so much uh, just sailing along, but it's when we, when I have to go back into the uh, mooring that it'll make it tricky coming up against the uh, dinghy. But we'll see what we can do. I got my first sailboat when I was only 10 years old. It uh, was a planked wooden boat made by a man who he was a good friend of my dad's. He later went on to uh, design uh, defense missiles for the Canadian government and then uh, ended up as a, a professor down in Quebec City. Um, and the boat was 6 feet 10 inches long, 53 inches wide, nearly as wide as long. and. Uh, paying too much attention here to uh, the videoing as opposed to what's happening with the winds here. Um, just trying to make it through a, a narrow cut. I don't know if you can see it up there in the camera, but there's a little island right there and it's got some uh, rocks around it. So I'm trying to, just trying to sneak my way through there if I can. Um, anyway, he built this little boat and it was in storage in my grandfather's garage up in the rafters for many years. And uh, when I was a young kid visiting, I'd ask stories about this little sailboat. It had been sailed on Lake Ontario, um, even the, as small as it was. But uh, eventually, they got permission that uh, I could have the boat in exchange for all the storage my grandfather had done for him with not only that boat, but other boats and other paraphernalia that he uh, wanted a safe place for. Um, that boat I sailed mostly on the uh, larger pond up in the uh, town of Uxbridge, Ontario and from there took it down when we moved to Marmara, Ontario and I sailed it on the uh, Crow Lake and Crow River, mostly on the river there. Eventually it ended up its life on a farm pond outside of Marmara, Ontario and uh, that's the uh, story of my first sailboat and I'm not sure I want to say how many decades ago that was but uh, I've already had this one for about two and a half decades so <laughs> time flies eh? Well I made it uh, through that narrow spot and around those rocks back there so uh, the uh, winds were up and down. Every time I get ready to uh, activate the camera again, then uh, the winds pick up and I've got to give my full concentration to the, uh, the sailing job. I don't have one of those little GoPro uh, waterproof cameras you can mount to anything. Uh, I'm using a, an older but uh, fairly expensive Sony Handycam digital and uh, it doesn't like to be bounced around or get wet that sort of thing so it uh, involves a little more work to uh, activate it well one-handed while uh, keeping the sailboat under control well maybe if i had a self-steering system that might help too eh? i'm hoping to uh, put up a thumbnail photograph for this video uh, it's a picture of my brother when he was about 13 uh, with a friend of his and uh, they were, he was using uh, an old inflatable well it was new then uh, but the boat just had a soft bottom no hard bottom to it whatsoever um, you felt every little wave on it when you were sitting on the bottom <laughs> but he rigged up a little sail on it and uh, I think it's kind of a cute picture because uh, it shows the ingenious workings of his mind 
and uh, what he accomplished with it. And that was taken on um, Crow Lake, or uh, Crow Bay of Bob's Lake here in Ontario. Um, not to be confused with Crow Lake. It was Crow Lake of Bob's Bay. The uh, little dinghy, we did take it out on Lake Ontario one time, uh, most of the way over to Amherst Island with a little three horse pushing it. Seemed to take forever, but uh, I forget the, the guy that made the famous quote, there's nothing like going down to the water and messing around in small boats. Our large boat was uh, sold uh, a year ago, this, this uh, earlier the month of August. Today is the 30th of August. And um, so we've missed it, but it was a large power boat. Um, my uh, admiral liked it because uh, she could have me uh, put it up on plane and uh, away we went from A to B in a straight line. We weren't dependent upon uh, tacking back and forth to go upwind. But uh, on this lake we have a lot of pontoon boats, sea doos, that sort of thing. Not too many sailboats, so that's why I was quite uh, surprised this afternoon to see uh, four sails up here, out here on this end of the lake. You might have wondered what the uh, solar panel is for up on the deck a few times. Well, I uh, have a large 31 series uh, deep cycle uh, marine battery here. And it lets me run my little uh, GPS just to keep an idea of distance traveled, speeds, that sort of thing. Uh, it's not set up for uh, marine navigation, so shows me nothing about water depths or contours or anything like that. Doesn't find fish either, but uh, it does keep a tabs on the important numbers that uh, I'm more interested in. Also, it allows me to, the battery allows me to have a uh, uh, bilge pump that I can run when I come on board, just uh, in case of any rainwater has gotten in, that sort of thing. So, it's come in handy and the solar panel keeps everything all powered up. Now, I'm going to try something here and take it back out to wider focus. Calmer just for a second, but you know, everybody seems to like putting their cameras down by the water to show what the hull line is doing. So, uh, here's a shot like that. I can't see how it's doing, but uh, we'll give it a try. If I have to edit it out, I will. But, uh, broader picture another gust feels like it's about to come up so uh, better put the camera away for a few minutes my uh, brother suggested to me that I should show you how I coil up my lines and hang them on the cleats there for the uh, mainsail and the jib I did bring a tripod out today but uh, I'm not sure the winds and waves are going to let me uh, safely uh, give you the demonstration of how I did that, but we'll work on that another time, maybe. I'm just coming up be beside a small island here, just big enough for one cottage on it, but that's given me a bit of a... Uh, I'm on the leeward, or approaching the leeward side of it here, so it gives me a bit of a break to do some filming. Um, I did, uh, at the start of this, I said I wanted to uh, get the uh, tiller handle uh, repaired here, and uh, or the tiller extension handle. So uh, I did get that done before I departed. Ooh, eyes back on the road here, getting over a little too close to that island now. Um, this lake does have some hidden shoals and whatnot. Most of them are marked, but not all. Some years back, uh, after acquiring this boat, my brother and I sailed it from Wapoos, which is on Prince Edward County near Picton, Ontario. And we uh, sailed it from there out to 
the Main Duck Islands in the middle of Lake Ontario and uh, camped there for a couple of nights and then headed for home in the waves that were left over from the windstorm. They were, waves were approaching six to eight feet and um, this little Nordica hull just uh, bobbed up and down over the waves like a cork and literally rode them up and down and both of us were uh, quite amazed at how well it did that and thankful that it did too. Wow, talk about getting be calmed in behind that island. I'm, uh, looks like there's waves here, but uh, the sails are just flopping around here. There's just nothing happening. And uh, oh, I see there's somebody over on the island. I think that's actually the first time I've ever seen a human being on the island. This makes it great for filming, but uh, not good, much good for making headway. <laughs> the winds will be back shortly. I feel them starting to pick up on my back as I speak. And there we go. You can see the sails filling up, and we're on the move again. So, put the camera away for a moment. This summer, I... Uh, pointed out this shoreline to my oldest grandson when we were sailing down here and told him that uh, the first time I ever slept on board a boat was uh, just off that shore. Um, one of my sailing mentors, Brian, and his family had a cottage there and he had an O'Day 20 uh, moored just off the shore. And my son and I got to spend the uh, night sleeping on that boat. And so I told my grandson it was the uh, first time I'd ever slept on board a boat. It just occurred to me as I started to film this that that's not entirely true because I had forgotten that when I was on f was five years old, I was going from uh, mainland British Columbia over to Vancouver Island, over to Nanaimo with an aunt and we had an overnight trip on that boat and uh, it was probably didn't last the whole night <laughs> but it was enough time for me to have a little bit of nap and at five i was really missing my mother she came over a day or two later i was getting an advanced trip to see some of my cousins i'd never met before Lots of stories. Time to think about them when I'm out cruising with the wind and the waves here. Uh, try another shot here with the water line. I don't know if I've ever seen it in the water quite from this angle before. But, uh, a few little ripples in the water. Winds are still fairly light at the moment, at least. Where I am, I'm not far from the uh, windward shore here. I'm on the lee side of the, the shoreline where the wind is coming from. The wind is supposed to be out of a westerly direction, according to AccuWeather, if you can believe them. At the moment, the GPS says I'm headed in a southerly direction. And I'm currently doing 3.8 statute miles per hour. It seems slow. But, uh, at least we're making headway. I've made it down here. Uh, I'm almost at my turnaround point. Now I'm one tack. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do it back all the way on one tack. I may have to uh, do some tacking in order to get home. Back to the morning. Yeah, my buddy's cottage is right over here on the shore, but doesn't appear that he's home this afternoon. So uh, 
won't be pulling in for for a chat. We'll just uh, do a 180 and head back to the barn. Winds dropping off very lightly and the slee shore here yeah, or leeward shore. Well, here I am sailing back uh, towards the mooring, which is way down at that far end of the lake, as far as you can see. Um, only to the right of, on the far right hand side. And a uh, little island up ahead there that I came by earlier. And uh, the shore in this bay over here, a couple of huge big houses in there now. Beautiful spots for them, although it is quite shallow there. Of course, where on this lake isn't shallow. Um, this is uh, probably one of the last of the nicest days, as I was, was saying earlier, for weather here. End of August. Labor Day's coming up in a week's time. Seems like the uh, the end of summer, pretty much, up here. We don't get endless summer like the uh, folks down in the southern U.S. Uh, feeling bad for those uh, hit by hurricane. Sorry, <laughs> sudden gust there. <laughs> Having to let her go up into the wind here. Can't can't grab the uh, main sheet fast enough with the camera in the hand, so uh, keeps me from capsizing. Hopefully, I'm gonna have to put the camera down and man the sails here. Well, several times I've been uh, wishing I'd had uh, three arms and hands to. Uh, be able to give you an idea of uh, the fun sailing along when the gusts come, getting her heeled over and the rail down to the water. And I, uh, when the winds are steady, I have no problem with uh, sailing with the, the lee rail under the water. But when it's gusty like this, uh, you have to be really fast on the reflexes, or it could cause you problems. And so that's why I tend to go a little more on the uh, conservative side of things when the, the winds are gusty. But uh, there's another one picking up now. If I have to make some fast, sudden moves here, <laughs> please excuse on the jerkiness of the camera picture. I try to hold it steady otherwise. There's a big tower way ahead. You may not be able to see it, but that's Kind of generally where I'm headed right now until I can get through the channel between uh, the fourth lake that I'm in right now and then the fifth lake, which is uh, the one where uh, my mooring is. And uh, I can aim for that tower. That uh, I'm pretty sure will get me all the way through the, the narrower section there without having to tack. And it seems like I may be able to make it home on, on this one tack, the same as I made it down to where I did the 180. And uh, I don't know, I always find it easier to be able to do that than do a whole lot of tacking. Not as bad when you have crew. Ah, the winds are picking up here a bit. I think I better put the camera down again so I can be prepared for it. Until next time. Well, I'm in the narrower channel here now. You can see that tower up there. Um, looks like I've got lots of clearance. I see one of those sails on that far shore there. And uh, my mooring is over in that direction. The uh, winds are slightly different here again. I'm just trying to figure out in my mind exactly how I'm uh, going to come in and tie up with the dinghy then on the mooring there safely because it's probably going to be a little more gusty down that way. But uh, 
It's been a great afternoon for sailing, and uh, I'm glad I made it out. Uh, thankful for the opportunity to do so. And, uh, looking forward to the next time. Won't be long now, another month, and it'll be time to uh, pull the Nordic out and get it all covered up and ready to survive another Ontario, Canada winter. Well, we're back on the mooring. According to the uh, GPS, round trip of 7.3 miles, uh, maximum speed of 6.3 miles per hour, and I forgot to check what the uh, moving average was. But uh, got the sails down and uh, got the wind noise, still have to take the flag down. Dinghy's out behind, so it's time to uh, uh, wrap it all up. And uh, as the old child TV show used to say, well, all in all, Maggie Muggins, I think we've had quite a day. Captain G, signing out. Now I know that I already signed out, but uh, as I mentioned I think very early on in the video, um, my brother had suggested a couple of things to me that I should show to you. And all three are actually, or two of his suggestions, one of mine, they're basically just little rope tricks. But if you have a extra line that you want to leave looking very nautical in nature, then this is one way to do it. Just uh, do it up in a in a in a coil like this, and if you leave that on your dock, or in this case, it's my main sheet here in the back of the cockpit. It uh, just has a nautical flavor. Another thing you can do is um, uh, with a dock line, for example, is just do up a uh, a link like this and leave that laying on the dock and uh, it looks pretty good and then when you want it out you just pull on the end of it and out she comes now I'll see if I can demonstrate how to do that up I'm gonna even try and do it without a tripod here so I take the line like this take the line up and do it like this and then I'm going to pull pull that through it is harder with one hand I'll have to tell you that pull that through like this pull it through like this now the admirals and your crew may be more familiar with this kind of a hair braiding technique but uh, was uh, my admiral that uh, first did it on uh, some of our dock lines and uh, had a lot of very favorable comments on it so and we've, we've seen other people do it so this isn't original but it's just a matter of uh, a chain linking it through and then leave the uh, the back end uh, loose like that and that's the end you pull on and that uh, that sets it free but, uh, of course, if you're using two hands, you can do it a little, a little neater than I did. But that's a good way to leave your dock lines. Looks pretty. So the other thing my brother suggested I show you is uh, how to tie up the, uh, the halyard after you've got your sails up. And uh, this is not original to me either. Uh, my sailing mentor Brian is the one that uh, taught me this one, but basically just uh, make a loop. This is my jib sheet so it's not quite as flexible as the halyards, but just make a loop of your lines like this, like that, and then when uh, you've reached the end just take several twists like this 
and I do a double loop like this around that and then pretend this is the tiller handle is my cleat and I can just hang it on there like that and uh, that should should keep you until you get back to the dock and uh, it doesn't get all tangled up and just drops free so those are the uh, the rope tricks for today and this time the captain will sign out have a good day